the victories you won. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. This is Pastor Pope, and we want to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. You know, our God is good, and he is worthy to be praised. Today, we want to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus, because you know what? God has something great in store for us, and I believe that we shouldn't leave anything on the table. We should go after everything that God has for us. So come on, everybody. Let's go to church. We just want to say thank you, Jesus, for one more day. Thank you, Jesus, for one more opportunity. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to let everybody know that no matter how old you are or how young you are, we can all give God praise. Amen. I don't care if you got a, if you can stand on your own yeah. or you need to stand with assistance, you can still give God praise. No matter what your condition may be, if you can't open your mouth because your throat is sore, you can still clap your hands. If your hands hurt because you got calluses, just tap your feet. If your feet hurt because you got arthritis, just give God a wave offering. But somehow, from faith, give God some praise on today. Amen, amen, and amen. We're going to ask the choir if they would give us just a little, just a little bit of something to stir our souls this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on, choir. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All this good.
some praises in the house today. Yeah, we got some praises in the house today. God is so good. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We just want to say thank you. Just want to say thank you. All right, all right, all right. We're going to get there. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. But I want to do something just before we do that. I want somebody to help me say thank you, Lord. But I want the choir to sing thank you, Lord. I want y'all to sing, thank you, Lord. I just need you to sing just a little bit of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you to say, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yeah, that's it. That's what I want you to do right there.
thank him because he's been so good this morning as we get ready to go to the message I'm going to ask you to go to both an Old Testament and a New Testament scripture with me this morning the Old Testament scripture is going to give you some of the context that's going to relate to what our New Testament scripture message is going to be preached on. Today we're going to take a look at the book of Exodus, chapter 34. And we want to see verses 29 through 35. Exodus, chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. In those passages will give us some context for where we're going to go in our New Testament scripture. So Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. Hallelujah. And when you have it, would you signify by saying amen? Amen. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and the word reads as follows. Now it was so, when Moses came down from the mount, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that, his, that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him, him being God. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord has spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses has finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Now, I want you to remember that. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out and would come out and speak to the children of Israel whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. He kept putting the veil on his face because his face was shining from the glory of the Lord. Now, if you would, turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 6 through 18. And I don't want you to forget what you just read in Exodus 34. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Taking a look at verse 6 through 18. 
Paul says these words in verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Somebody say new covenant. Not of the letter. Somebody say letter. But of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what has, was made glorious had no glory in this respect. Because of the glory that excels, for if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Now here we go. You're going to get some understanding here. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, here we go, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the living God. I need somebody to say, from glory, glory. to glory. Somebody say, from glory, from glory to glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father God, we just come now in the name of your son Jesus, and we come to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. We come to Heavenly Father to move from glory to glory. We come to draw closer to you. We come to be more like you. We come to have the boldness of the spirit of the living God. We come, Lord God, to receive all that you have in store for us. Lord God, that we may ever glorify and magnify your holy name. We love you, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. Now speak, Lord, as only you can. Speak, Lord, as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to come to you, and I have both my hands out. In one hand, I have $500,000. In the other hand, I have $2. Now, the choice is yours. Which amount you take or which hand you chose, which hand you chose to reach and take. You can either take the $500,000 or you can take the $2, and there are no strings attached. I want to know which one you're going to choose. Did somebody say the $2? I'm going for the $500,000. There are no strings attached. I'm even going to pay your taxes. 
So you don't have to worry about paying taxes on it. I want to make sure that you get everything that you are owed. Everything that you are due. Everything that is able to come to you. So for me, now for all you $2 folks, that's fine if you want to be satisfied with $2. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be satisfied with $2. I'm going to go ahead and get that $500,000. Amen. Ushers, can y'all adjust the air a little bit? Take it off heat, put it on cool. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want that 500000 and I want to tell you something. God wants you to have everything that, that he has promised you. God doesn't want you to be lacking in anything. But I want to tell somebody this. There's always something or somebody that's going to try to get in your way of getting everything that God has already promised you. You know, Paul had that issue when he wrote this letter to the Corinthians. There were some Judaizers that were trying to keep the people back from receiving the blessings of God. There were some Judaizers that were saying that you need to be a uh, 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 circumcised. You need to come under the Mosaic law if you truly want to be saved. Now, it's okay if you want Jesus, but you got to have the Mosaic law as well. And Paul was trying to help the people to understand. God has already laid out the 500,000 for you. You don't have to add anything else to what God is trying to do because God wants to bless you. In the new covenant, there's the great blessing that the Lord has for each and every one of us. In the new covenant, there is liberty that God wants to give each and every one of us. See, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3 and 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My brothers and my sisters, as God has already sent his son, Jesus Christ, to give us the liberty through the new covenant, the Lord wants us to know that we are no longer bound to Sunday morning rituals. The Lord wants us to know that we don't have to operate anymore under forced obedience. The Lord wants us to know that as we are children of the living God, that we have complete access to him. We have freedom of speech when we come before the Lord God. Before the First Amendment was written, God had already given us freedom of speech. The Lord wants us to know that as our hearts are focused on following his commandments, that we will be a people who are able to move from glory to glory. The Lord wants us to know that if we set our minds on seeking the glory of the Lord, then we're going to be those people that Paul was talking to, those people that move from one level of glory to another level of glory. See, saints of God, we're New Testament believers. We're New Testament believers, and, and under this new covenant that we have, God says, I want you to move higher and higher in, my, in your relationship with me. God says, I don't want you to be satisfied for mediocrity. I don't want you to be satisfied with just coming to church on Sunday morning and sitting down for two hours or so and leaving and leaving the same way that you came in. God says, I want somebody to walk out of here and, and you got such joy in your soul that you're ready to shout on Sunday. You're ready to shout on Monday. You're ready to shout on Tuesday because you just realized, Lord, I went to church and I picked up $500,000. There's no strings attached, oh God. And they're going to pay my taxes too? I want everything, God, that you got for me. Anybody want everything that God has got for you? Anybody want everything that God has got for you? I want to tell you something. When God prepares a table before you, your plate is going to be overflowing. 
if anybody in here has ever been to Lawakey Steakhouse, you know they put a steak on your plate that hangs over all the sides. Well, when you sit down at God's table, your plate is going to be so full that all you have to do is sit there and eat from the Lord's table. God says, I want to bless you today, and I want to bless you this afternoon. I want to bless you tonight. I want to bless you tomorrow morning. I want to bless you in the noonday. I want to bless you in the afternoon. I want to bless you in the evening time. I want to bless you day in and day out. Does anybody want to move from glory to glory? Hallelujah. Well, if you want to move from glory to glory, the Lord says a couple things that we need to do. That we need to stay focused on the grace of the living God. We need to stay focused on the grace of the living God. You see, because as we focus on the grace of the living God, we realize that we have received the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel that offers righteousness to us. The gospel that came as a free gift to mankind. You see, the gospel gives life because the gospel is based on the sacrificial work of Jesus on the cross. The gospel has released the, the gift of the Holy Spirit to us. And now, as we have received the righteousness of God. And now, as we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Lord wants us to know that we are no longer rebound uh, again by the spirit of fear. But the Bible says that, that we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That adoption thing is important. See, you know, I remember when my kids were young and we got ready to go buy something. And I said, well, boys, we, we really can't afford to do this. And they said, well, Daddy, we can afford to do it. You got a credit card. And I said, y'all don't understand that somebody got to pay that credit card. So we can't really afford to do this because I got to conserve what's on that credit card. But as we have been adopted by the living God, the Bible says that God owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness yeah. thereof. Yeah, yeah. The Bible lets us know that he'll provide for all of our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Because of grace and the fact that we have been adopted and are now children of the living God, we don't have to worry about our daddy running out of money. We don't have to worry about our Heavenly Father running out of provision. We don't have to worry about lacking because our God will provide for all of our needs. He won't have to do like I told our children. I got to worry whether I'm going to pay this or pay that. Our Father said just focus on the grace. And because of grace, I brought you into the family. And now that you're in the family, we can walk under the ministry of grace. And as we walk under the ministry of grace, it's a little different than when they walked under the old covenant blessings. You see, under the old covenant blessings, they had to, the, God's commandments written on two tablets of stone. And the commandments were placed inside of the Ark of the Covenant. Let me tell somebody. That as we are under God's grace, that we are now the, the living tablets of God's word. Because God's word is now written on our hearts. We've received the gospel and, and we're living example of the gospel. We are living examples of the gospel. Why? Because the Holy Ghost lives down on the inside of us. And as the Holy Ghost lives down on the inside of us, the Holy Ghost is a life-giving spirit. I love the fact that God has given us his spirit because the Holy Ghost helps us understand our true na nature. We know that we need the Lord because we are not a people who could save ourselves. We are all sinners that are saved by grace. 
Paul testified in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, but, the, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it's but by the grace of God that I am what I am. It's not because the Lord has blessed me to, to be the pastor of this church. It's by the grace of God that I am what I am. It's not because of the job I have or the place that I live. It's but by the grace of God that I am what I am. Somebody say grace. Thank God for grace. Hallelujah. Thank God for grace. You see, it's grace that got us to this place where we are. See, because Romans 3 and 20 says that the law revealed the knowledge of sin. But grace has helped us to overcome sin. The law could not help us live a life of righteousness. But it certainly helped us to see the need for grace given to us in the salvation of Jesus Christ. I liken it to the time that I haven't eaten all day and my stomach is rumbling and grumbling. That rumbling and grumbling is just a sign that I need to do something, that my body is lacking something. Somebody's got some rumbling and grumblings going on in your spiritual life. And that rumbling and grumbling is telling you that you need something. I'm here to tell you that if you got some rumbling and grumbling going on, it's time to get some grace. Hallelujah. It's time to, to latch on to God's grace. How do we get the grace? We get the grace through the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. The law, God had given the law to Moses, and he gave it to him for a purpose. And what the law did is the law prescribed for us exactly what we were supposed to do. Thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt. But even though it prescribed to us what we were supposed to do, what the law didn't do is the law did not give us any power to obey the will of the living God. We had the commandments, but we didn't have the power through the law to obey the will of God. In order for us to do what God has called us to do, God said that you need a heart transplant. All right, all right. God said you need, you, 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 you need a new heart. God says there needs to be a change from the inside out. God said we need some grace to bring about a change in our heart. We need some power. We need some spiritual power. So not only does God want us to focus on the grace of God so that we can move from glory to glory, but we need to focus on the transformation power of God so that we can move from glory to glory. Right. See, the law of Moses was a written code, but the gospel of Jesus is a transforming power of the spirit. Think about this. The only person after God had given the Ten Commandments, after he'd written all the commandments on the tablets of stone, nobody could open up the Ark of the Covenant and read those commandments, laws, and judgments anymore. Once they were in the Ark of the Covenant, they were sealed in the Ark of the Covenant. Even if the Israelites had gotten permission to open up the Ark and look inside and read all of the commandments and the judgments, the commandments and the judgments still wouldn't have changed their lives. See, the law, the law, the Old Testament, are the external requirements and the external regulations. And they serve to point us to the need for salvation. And if we are going to be the people that God wants us to be, we can't just rely on the external. Now, I'm not telling anybody to throw out the law. But what I'm saying is, what we need is we need the whole Bible. We need the law and we need grace. We need some transforming power. 
And that transforming power is only going to come through the grace of Jesus Christ. As we receive the grace of Jesus Christ, now the Lord begins to work on the inside outside. He works on the inside to the outside so that we can conform to the image of Jesus Christ. We all look like somebody. You know, you've heard people say, you look like your mama. You look just like your sister. Boy, you the spitting image of your daddy. Well, I tell you what, I pray that my prayer is that we all conform to the image of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the Holy Spirit continues to work in us and we move from glory to glory, my prayer is that, that, that we'll look like, just like Jesus Christ. As the Holy Spirit works in us and we move from glory to glory, we'll all experience a new level of freedom in Jesus Christ. We want, some, we, want, we want to be free. We want to be free. We want to, we want to have a spiritual boldness about ourselves. We want to be able to, to, to speak freely and clearly about who we are in Christ Jesus. You know, the world speaks freely and clearly about who they are. The world doesn't mind telling you exactly who they are. But as believers in Christ, sometimes we want to work for the CIA. You know the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency. Under the Central Intelligence Agency, you don't walk around telling everybody you a spy, right? So some of us act like we work for the CIA when we deal with our Christianity, and we try to keep our Christianity under wraps. We don't want nobody to know that we are Christian, but we got to be bold. Hallelujah. We got to be a bold in a, in a world that's full of darkness. We got to be bold in a world that's full of sin. We got to be bold in a world where people are dying and going to hell every day. We got to be bold. And if we're going to move from glory to glory, we need the grace of God to transform us so that we can be bold for Jesus Christ. See, we got to have that transformation power. Because we need that transformation power so that we can walk in obedience to the commandments of the Lord God Almighty. You know how it was when you were little and, and mama and daddy told you not to do something. Well, let me speak for myself. I know how it was when, mom, when we were little and mom and daddy said, don't jump on the bed. And as soon as we heard the car pull out the driveway and <laughs> both mom and daddy were in the, in, in the car, me and Tim, jumping on the bed, back and forth, jumping on the bed, back and forth. And you know something always wrong happened after we was jumping on the bed. Hallelujah. I remember one time we were jumping on the bed and I called myself being an acrobat. And I jumped real high and I flipped from one bed to the next. I jumped too far and my heel went through the wall. And I said, oh, Lord, I'm in trouble now. So I found a picture of a train and nailed it up over the hole in the wall. For many years, my sisters thought I was being artistic. I was just hiding a hole in the wall. Hallelujah. It doesn't pay to disobey mama and daddy. I want to let you know it doesn't pay because eventually you're going to be found out. But when we hear what thus saith the Lord, if we really want to be Move from glory to glory. We have to say, Lord, transform me inside out. Help me, Lord God, to obey your will. Help me, Lord God, to obey your way. Because we don't want to just be a reflection of the glory of God. We want the glory of God to radiate from us. We want the glory of God to, we don't want the glory of God to fade. We want the glory of God to be a shining light. We want the glory of God to always be so bright that when people see us, they say, mm, there's something different about you. Amen. That there's something different about you. You, 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 you don't talk like you used to talk. You don't do the things like you used to do. How come, how, how, how come you don't want to carry on this conversation anymore? Because the glory of God is radiating from the inside out. Instead of talking nonsense, the only thing that you want to talk about now is lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, the only thing that you want to talk about is how good God has been to you. The only thing that you want to talk about is, is how that people can get saved. The only thing that you want to talk about is what you can do to lift up God. Transformation coming from the inside out. And that power, that power 
comes as the Holy Spirit continues to work in us. That power, power comes as the Holy Spirit takes out the old and, and replaces it with the new. I'm so thankful that God has given us a chance to be new creatures in Christ Jesus. There's a song where the choir was singing at one time, less of me and, and more of you. Lord, give me, take, let me have less of me and, and Lord, let me have more of you. That's our prayer. Lord, let it be less of me and, and let it be more of you, Lord. I want to walk to Heavenly Father. I want to walk like, I, I want to talk like, I, I want to act like none other than Jesus Christ. I want to be, God, who you want me to be. You see, my brothers and my sisters, God has made a way for you and for me to continue to grow in him. See, the Mosaic law was transitory in nature. It was filled with, with a number of shadows and types that all foreshadowed the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it foreshadowed the coming of the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. It foreshadowed the coming of the one who would die on the cross at Calvary, but on the third day he would rise from the grave with all power in his hand. We got a New Testament. We got a new covenant. We got a new contract. We got a new relationship with the Lord God Almighty. And as we have this new relationship, the Lord tells us to draw nigh unto him. And, and as we draw nigh unto him, we'll watch the reflection of the Lord in us grow brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, we beheld the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. He said, listen, as you stayed in that word, as you dove in that word, as, as you were digging through the word of God, you began to see the changes that were needed. And as you began to see the changes that were needed, your prayers changed. Your prayers changed. You, you began to see the changes that were needed, and you stayed in that word. And as you stayed in that word, you began to hang out with me a little bit more. And as you hung out with me a little bit more, and your conversation changed, your life began to change, and there was some transforming power that came over you. When you hung out with me just a little while longer, the Lord said, I began to work on you. And, and as I began to work on you, you wanted to, to, to stay closer to me. And you wanted to do more of what I wanted you to do. And you stayed closer to me. I put a little in your hand. And you took what I put in your hand. And you used it for my glory. And I added a little more to your hand. And you used that for my glory. And I added a little more to your hand. And you just added that. To my, and I gave you use that for my glory. The Lord said the, the more time that you're spending with me and the harder that you're working to follow after my spirit, uh, the, the less time that you're spending working after follow after the urges of the flesh, the Lord says, I want you to continue what you're doing already because I'm going to move you from glory to glory. I'm going to move you from place to place. I'm going to move you from position to position. I'm going to move you closer to me. Why? Because you're telling me that you love me. And not only are you telling me with your words, but now you let your heart be drawn near unto me. And as your heart is drawing near unto me, I, I can see that I can trust you. I know that you love me. I know that you love me because you're showing me that you love me. You, you, you're putting more emphasis on me than you're putting on the world. You, you're letting your light so shine before men that they see your good works. And, and now you're doing what you can do to glorify the Father which is in heaven. The Lord says he wants all of us to be able to, to get the $500,000. God says, I want you to get everything that, that I have for you. God says, I don't want you to leave anything on the table. I want you to take everything that is due you. I, I'm putting it out here, and, and now I want you to grab hold of it. And as you begin to grab hold of it, I want you just to continue to focus on me. But not only do I want you to continue to focus on me, I want you just to rely on me. Because as you rely on me, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to order your steps. And as I begin to order your steps, you, 
begin to see me do some things that not even you had expected. I, you'll begin to see me take you to places where you never have even thought about going. You, you'll see me just have you do work that you never thought about doing because I'm ordering your steps now. And, and what I'm doing is I'm taking you from glory to glory because what I'm going to do is one day I'm going to come back and when I come back and your hand is on the gospel plow and, and I see that you're working for me, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call you on up and I'm going to call you on up to be with me and I want you to come on up because I want you to get your reward and because you've been faithful to me you've been faithful over a few things now I'm going to make you ruler over many things you, you've been moving from glory to glory on this side of the Jordan you've been moving from glory to glory and you didn't try to lift up your own name but you sought to lift up my name among all men you've been moving from glory to glory and, and you've been shouting thank you to the Lord God Almighty you been moving from glory to glory and you wouldn't put your Bible down you kept picking your Bible up you've been moving from glory to glory and you wouldn't get off your knees you stayed on your knees and you kept talking to me you been moving from glory to glory you kept obeying on my commandments you've been moving from glory to glory and you've shown yourself faithful you've been moving from glory to glory and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you come on up I'm going to have you come on up and get your reward you've been moving from glory to glory you've been doing what I called you to do and you've been who I want you to be and now it's time for you to get your reward See, we're trying to get higher in the Lord. But we're not trying to get higher in the Lord so that people can look at us. We want them to see Jesus. We're trying to get higher and higher in the Lord so that we could be in the place that God wants us to be. See, we're trying to be in position. So that not only can we receive a blessing, but that we can be a blessing. Somebody is waiting on you to lead them to the cross. Somebody is waiting on you to show them the difference between evil and good and darkness and light. Somebody is waiting on you. Because only you can reach them. I can't go and don't go to the places that you go. I can't talk to and don't talk to the people that you talk to. But you do. And God has already equipped you to do what he has ordained for you. He's laid out your destiny. And what God says, why are you going to stay on this level when I'm ready to take you to this level? Amen. But if you're going to get there, we have to stay focused on the task at hand. We have to stay focused on magnifying and glorifying God. Last Wednesday night, I was telling the Bible study that we want to get an understanding of the full will of God. We have to focus on God's will so that as we focus on God's will, then he will impart his spiritual wisdom and his spiritual understanding to each of us and that we would use that understanding to glorify him, to magnify his holy name. And when we keep God first, when we think about the spiritual things over the physical things, I heard this week a wise woman told me to go on and let all this stuff in the world go and watch God take care of everything else. You don't have to worry, saints. 
about tomorrow. Let God handle tomorrow. You can plan. I'm not telling you not to plan. You can plan. But I'm telling you not to worry. Don't worry, right? Don't worry. God's going to take care of tomorrow. All we have to do is worry about how we're going to be in our relationship with him on tomorrow. Amen? Amen. We're going to move from glory to glory. It's time to go ever higher in the Lord. It's time for us to get everything that God wants us to get. Here's the 500000 Here's the $2. Which hand are you going to choose? Which hand are you going to choose? We praise God for you. And we're going to get ready to move to our benediction. That we might prepare to dismiss. We might leave from this place. But we're never going to leave from the presence of the living God. For your glory. Hallelujah. I will, I will, I will do anything just to see you. Just to see you. To behold you as to behold you as my king. I wanna be where, be you, where are. you are. Gotta be where. God, we just come now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We come to bless you and to thank you. We come to Heavenly Father seeking your face and seeking your presence. We come, Lord God, humbling ourselves before an almighty God. Dear Heavenly Father, because we do want to stay focused on the grace that you have extended to us. Through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We want to stay focused on the transformative power of the Holy Spirit that is working in us as you have made us the temple of the living God. We want to stay focused on lifting up your holy and your divine name to be who you are, to be all that you have called us to be. Lord, we do want to move from glory to glory. We want to move ever higher in you. We want to move from glory to glory. Now, Lord God, we pray that the grace of Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide with us all now and forevermore. And all God's people said amen, 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 amen. and amen. Our God is an awesome God, and he is worthy to be praised. You know what? The Lord says that we can move from glory to glory. But if we want to move from glory to glory, I tell you what, saints, we got to make sure we stay focused on the grace of God. We have to stay focused on the transformation power of God because our God has given us everything that we need in order to move higher in him. If we want to move higher in him, it takes a change from the inside out. The question that I have for you, is are you ready for the change? If you're ready for the change, then God is ready to bring about the change. God is ready to bless you. We'd like to invite you to join us at our Sunday school at Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Then for our worship hour experience at Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And then for our Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m.
p.m. We would love to have you. We would love to have the opportunity to see you. Drop on by so that we can show you some love and love on you. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Have a blessed day.